My name is Jeremy Campbell, and I am a journalist. And that word, that word can mean so many things to so many different people. And because of that, I made a list. And when I read out a description that fits what you do at work, I want to hear from you in the room. Storyteller. <laughs> photographer. Fact finder. Therapist. Writer. Travel agent. Crisis negotiator. Do we have any miracle workers out there? <laughs> You're in this ballroom tonight, nominated for an Emmy Award, because those all describe what you do. You're a journalist. In the past year, you've covered the Super Bowl of news, which is the actual Super Bowl, it turns out. <laughs> You exposed test kits that were putting innocent people behind bars. And because of your coverage, the victims of the Atlanta child murders now have a memorial in their honor. That is the power of journalism. You're watchdogs, you're truth tellers, you're full of heart, and you're here for the community. You are journalists. But everyone doesn't see us with that same scope. We're often discredited, we're often denied and as we seek the truth, some call us enemies of the state. It affects and impacts every single one of us in this room. We're joined tonight by a news team from Columbia, South Carolina, WLTX. That team was arrested fighting to get to the truth. Two people died from carbon monoxide poisoning in public housing. We were seeking answers at a public records building when we were handcuffed and detained. It was an act of intimidation by a crisis management team. Our entire station stood outside the housing complex to support us. We were released, we got the records, and it only strengthened our resolve to di keep digging. They won't stop until every single voice is heard. And when those voices are heard, it can be absolutely life-changing. My journey of redemption was a personal struggle until a news story announced to the world that I had defeated my demons and gave me the opportunity to close the door on a life that almost killed me and has allowed me the freedom to live. This is one of the best moments of my life. That is what we get to do for work every single day, no matter who stands against us. And this next lady has seen it all too well. Everyone in this room knows who she is. Please welcome Miss Jocelyn Dorsey. It was 1974 when I was cursed and called the N-word by an angry crowd who didn't want me to cover white supremacist J.B. Stoner's bid for lieutenant governor. And I was the only black to step inside the Sheraton Biltmore Ballroom of more than 100 people. I was terrified at what they might do to me. But I was also determined to show them who I was, a journalist who could cover the story and not be the story. So Stoner calmed the crowd down. We sat down and rolled the camera. The forces that we're all up against can be relentless, but we are too. Relentless is our middle name. We're journalists. So as you walk to this stage tonight to accept your Emmy Award, remember how far we've come and why we're here to fight the good fight. Thank you. Forget the myths that the media has created about the White House. The truth is, these are not very bright guys, and things got out of hand. Supposedly, he's got a lawyer with $25,000 in a brown paper bag. Just follow the money. You call Jane Craig, just a minute, then we're going to go to Martin Trinic State for the message from Libya. Then you're going to have the carrier pilot from the Sidra in time to... What? No! You missed him! We only have ten minutes left. How can you talk to me about parking problems? No! Not your try! You'll do it! Do it! Goodbye! I had no idea. 
idea she was this good. Sex and innuendo. That's what sells these days. Woody Allen and Mia Farrow. Donald Trump and Marla Maples. Pee Wee Herman and... Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> I remember a time when journalism was a profession of honor. But unless we get up off our fat surpluses and recognize that television in the main is being used to distract, delude, amuse, and insulate us, then television and those who finance it, those who look at it, and those who work at it may see a totally different picture too late. This instrument can teach. It can illuminate, and yes, it can even inspire. But it can do so only to the extent that humans are determined to use it towards those ends. Otherwise, it is merely wires and lights in a box. Done all you can, and seems like it's never enough. And what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone? What do you give when you give in your all? And seems like you can't make it. to do you just stand watch the Lord see you through yes after you've done all you can you just stand shame and how can you smile when your heart has been broken and filled with shame filled with pain what do you give when you give all you can and it seems like it's never enough child you just stand when there's nothing left to do, you just stand. Watch the Lord see you through just after you've done all you can. You just stand. stand and be sure. And be, sure. be not entangled with that bondage again. You just stand. A purpose, yes, God has a plan. Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can, and it seems like you can't make it through. Shall you just stand? Stand. stand.